Yeah, because at first I was panicking. <laughs> Don't tell them we're panicking. We're supposed to look like we're in control. <laughs> Welcome to This Week in Our Collective Heads. I'm Kevin. I'm Tiffany. I'm Mia. And uh, they are Tandem Canon. They have their own podcast, and it's focused on co-op play. Yay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm selling y'all, y'all talk about your show real quick. <laughs> yeah, Mia, you talk about our show. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're a, a gaming po- a podcast. We, we talk about co-op games a lot. Mm-hmm. Um and just discuss our different adventures. We go to different conventions, uh, like QuakeCon and whatnot, and just yeah. fangirl. And yeah, we are we are loving, we're nostalgia feeling when it comes to games. So we just love, I guess, fangirling about whatever we love, experiences and stuff like that. So games are very addictive. So <laughs> always. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you if you are interested in co op gaming in particular, and just Gaming ladies in particular, uh, check yeah. out Tandem Cannon. They're on they're on Twitter and Twitch and all those places and all the social stuff. You're, you're just Tandem Cannon everywhere, right? We're Tandem Cannon all the wares. Yes, rock on. <laughs> and, and today they're joining me on Twitch, and we're going to talk about all the all the news leading up to E3. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to have a separate separate episode on Monday night that we mm-hmm. record because we've only had one conference so far, and so we we want to kind of lump that all that together. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about everything before E3. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. And here we go. So the first thing that we have is uh, is the end is nigh. And um, I don't know mm-hmm. if, you, if y'all have played uh, any of the Edmund McMillan games, uh, Super Mm-mm. Meat Boy or, oh. or Binding of Isaac. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they're, heard of them. they're like stupid hard games and I love them. <laughs> and, and like, because uh, that's, that's, that's kind of my thing. I, right. I just, I just love the, the, the accomplishment that right. comes with beating something really hard. Oh, definitely. Especially if I can play it on Vita. I don't think this one's coming to Vita. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, the, the End Is Nigh is, is one of the projects that he's been working on for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be like 600 plus rooms and it's, it's going to annihilate me. And I can't wait. <laughs> and uh, so right now we know that it's, it's coming to Switch and PC. Mm-hmm. It's, it's coming to PC and then eventually to Switch. Mm, awesome. And so I'm planning on getting a Switch later. So I'll be able to play it there. And that makes me happy. Sweet. So yeah. what are you looking forward to most about this release mm-hmm. um okay so super meat boy was was kind of his first his first foray into into platforming right and then binding of isaac was uh was the the more procedurally generated he he tried mm-hmm. to come up with a bunch of a bunch of different ideas mm-hmm. to to kind of cram into his game right. so at the end is not looks like something that's more um it, it's a lot closer to his platforming roots uh-huh. and so uh you know he says 600 plus levels oh my gosh <laughs> Which, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be playing this game forever, and that's that's the thing is like with with his titles, um, like they're fairly cheap, and I feel like I get a lot of value out. Right, of them. Yeah. right. So six hundred levels. I mean. So yeah, and it seems like I, of course, like in the trailer, which I thought was very very creative and very very <laughs> boss. Yeah. It makes me wonder. Okay, you saw what level number one was. It is pretty complicated. It's more complicated than the level one for Mario. I don't. Super Mario Bros. Okay, so so I don't think I don't think that's gonna be. I don't think that's going to be level one. I think that's like supposed to be representative of the game, uh-huh. Uh-huh. As a whole. and then and then it's going to be like his games. His games, his games are stupid mad. Like <laughs> like uh, okay, so Binding of Isaac is is a lot about like the religious aspects of stuff, and yeah. so like there's all kinds of like uh, Catholicism and iconography and stuff like that. Right. And so and so I feel like that this is just kind of his way of of poking fun at his own ideas. Ah, and then yeah, yeah, he's he's a weird guy. Okay, so the, we need that though. Okay, so yeah. so this is this is uh, we're we're again we're doing the show a little different this week, and we're gonna we're gonna cover all the topics in depth, just like Patrick and I used to. <laughs> which means that we're not gonna worry about time. So if you're here for the a quick dash through of the news, you're not getting that this week. Mm-mm. Check next week. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, that's what the fangirling is. We'll. We gone forever, so sorry. <laughs> and boy, sorry. Yeah. And and not sorry. <laughs> and sorry. Also sorry. important to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so I'm I'm looking forward to that. That's supposed to come out uh, within a month or two. He's mm-hmm. he's already pushing it towards uh, certification. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm crazy excited about that. This wow. is this is this is my guy. Um, awesome. I played Aww. I played Binding of Isaac for at least three or four hundred hours. Well, that is um, a lot. Okay, okay, so so okay, so you know you know how on on PlayStation it'll when you look at trophies it'll tell you like what percentage of people that have played this got the trophy. Yeah. Okay, so the platinum on Binding of Isaac, which I have, is point zero six. 
percent like, of people that play the game. So that's like beyond that. ultra rare. Okay. Wow. For Bloodborne, it's eight percent. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> like, and I, this is point zero. So yeah, it's it's. I am seriously beyond. Uh, I am impressed right now. <laughs> right. No <cap>. It's. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just so fun and and because it's on Vita I can play it forever. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so uh the next topic is they did a Pokemon Direct this week. Mm-hmm. Um and I don't know I don't know how any into Pokemon y'all are. I, I hear you mention it every once in a while but it doesn't seem like it's It's not really my thing. Yeah. I've I've heard about it and when Pokemon Go came out, I remember like I kind of want to do that cuz we were at um Classic Game Fest mm-hmm. last year, and there were like literally dozens of people oh, yeah, yeah, outside yeah. running around, and I'm like, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I'm not as familiar as I'd like to be, but it, it seems kind of cool. I just feel like I was too old for it. But yeah. At the time. yeah. I, I I definitely missed the boat on that one. I was I was too old for it. But like I was I was really hoping that they'd give us more of substance when it came to like the Switch. That's what yeah. I heard. Because because yeah. uh, what they're doing is is they're bringing gold and silver to Virtual Console on DS. Ultra Sun and Moon, which is like another storyline for Sun and Moon that came out last year, mm-hmm. also on the DS. And the only oh, thing that's yeah. coming to Switch is Pokemon Tournament. Yeah. And it's like, like we like fighting games and everything, but like, like use put, your new platforms. Like yeah, that's and, why and, you have like, them. Po- Pokemon is a huge is a huge uh, trademark IP. Yes, they it is. Push yeah. Push it. Use it. And, <laughs> right. And, like justify ah. why you should go get the Switch. I mean, yeah. isn't that the whole point of you know releasing this? Yeah, new... I I feel like I feel like they kind of they kind of did what some of the third parties did. It's mm-hmm. like they're they're like okay, we'll put out some stuff, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, right. And and I feel like they did themselves a disservice by it, doing that. So it, I, I I think stuff will come, but and it seems like they're doing that with a lot of the games. It's not right. just even just the Pokemon um, thing. It's just a lot of the games, especially as we go through the list there's a lot of games that are kind of like yeah we're releasing this for all the other consoles but switch we're gonna wait we're not sure yet well it's like the 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 Mm -hmm. fifa on switch is is gonna be i think the best handhold fifa that we've ever had oh yeah definitely but it's not gonna be but if you're gonna play it on the tv you won't play it somewhere else yeah so i don't know the the switch is in kind of a weird position um and i i I I think the popularity will will allow them to to bring it up and, and pull it out you know like yeah. they need to, they're just trying to play catch up right now. Because yeah. I don't like the 3DS is cool, but I, I'm we we have a new Nintendo Sell portable. Yes. We have a new Nintendo portable. Yes. Give me games on that one yes. and let the 3DS go. I mean that system's like right. yeah. how old? It's like eight nine years old. Like it's, it's, it's been out it's for been a while. Okay, a Nintendo. Long time. It's time. <laughs> it's time. Let it go. Let it go. They, and, they need and a new put everything. Just everything on the Switch and let me buy it there. Especially since the Switch, when it was released, supposed to be the fulcrum that totally turned the tables for Nintendo. So why not utilize right. and it full force? And it does. But but Nintendo Nintendo is cautious. And that's why we still don't have virtual console either. See, I like I like having a podcast because I can yell at Nintendo. Okay? They're not, they're, not li- they're not they're not listening, but I can yell at them. That's Nintendo's fun. not being no friend though. That's right. what they need to be. It's like they can only ride on exactly. they can only exactly. ride on Breath of the Wild for so long. It's yes. like you have yes. to release something else to keep people engaged so, and interested. I don't, I don't know if y'all watched the the, the predictions episode, oh, but I said yeah. I said that they're going to be talking more about uh, ports than IPs because mm-hmm. ports Probably, ports are easier. Yeah, yeah. and frankly. Not enough people had the Wii U, and there, there were some great games on Wii U, mm-hmm. but I hated that system. Yeah, That's like just, yeah. just, yes. just turn, just turning it on. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, did it remind you of oh, dial up? Is that what it was? It, okay, it's 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 like it's like going even even when it came out, it was like going because because I do the I do the games with Gold and the PlayStation Plus games. Yeah, and so it's like going going from PlayStation Four and Xbox One to the three hundred and sixty and PS Three oh, because yeah. it just it just feels slow and like the the system UI and everything and like I don't don't like this controller but the switch the switch feels feels like a a tablet is supposed to be it 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 feels a lot more versatile compared to the 
hunk of junk that you got before um, from the Wii U. I yeah. think. Yeah, the the Wii U the Wii U feels like a play school. Like yeah. it's, it's it's just too big. That's what they're <laughs> and that just catch well, or, or like an old arcade, you know, set up. Yeah. Feel like yeah. okay, let me get the buttons. Let me get the buttons yeah. and the joystick and, and all that stuff. So that's and it, it, it needs to it needs to feel to feel sleek and and, and intuitive. It'll be more natural too. And, I mean, it's like the the switch is sexy. Like you just you just oh, yeah. hold it and it just feels good. Like, oh yeah. So anyway, so that's that's the Nintendo <laughs> Nintendo Pokemon and bit. Nintendo Spiel. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, last week we talked a little bit about Destiny Two. Um, <gasps> oh. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all go ahead now on that because like <laughs> because like like uh, first person shoot. Okay, so like I got kids. I don't have time for an MMO. Yeah. Uh, and then I am terrible. At first person shooting, like I'm, I'm just not good at. It. Really? Yeah, because huh. like, so like, so like, uh, I, I need, I need a game. Okay, like, I love Borderlands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they'll give me a class that, like, uh, in in the first one you had Roland, I throw up a shield, I hide behind it and shoot at guys, <laughs> and you know my turret gets rockets and shoots at bad guys right, too. And, right. and if if worse comes to worse, I can run away. And then come back and shoot them again. Exactly. Right. And and that's that's how I have to play those games. And then and then Far Cry has really good stealth. Oh yeah. And so I sneak up and stab everyone. Yeah. Stab, stab, stab. We stab, should stab. have you uh, play Ghost Recon with us one day. Yes. <laughs> there's a um, there's a mission where um, an achievement where you have to go around and kill like 50 people just through stealth. Just with stealth. And See, yes. I'm 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 good at stealth and I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to actual shooting, that's I'm I'm actually kind of having a hard time with Horizon oh. because they the the stabbing mechanics are not where your power's at. Your power's in your in your bow and your shooting and oh, stuff like yeah. that. I didn't anticipate that. So I'm like, twink, 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 twink. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm hitting with like one out of five. Yeah. And it's not hitting their critical areas. And so I mostly hide. See, and that's how I had to be when I played the reboot Tomb Raider series because a lot of times when you first start out, they're, you're, you're, she's given the bow, and of course, gradually you get to upgrade said bow. But mm-hmm. it's like I have to be stealthy because I'm, if targets move, I can't hit them in their critical area. So that right. so it teaches you to be stealthy when you have this bow and arrow. But since I have not played Horizon yet, I don't know how to even comment on that because I'm sure the same gaming elements is in play. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of it. And, um, and and like you've got you've got a little. Uh, bullet time slash slow down time mechanic and so that helps mm-hmm. but I, I I still don't feel confident about my shooting people in the face skills so des- so between those two things destiny is something that I, I was like that looks really pretty it looks like a lot of fun <laughs> I, I, I like I like Bungie I like the halo yes. the, that that part of it they've got you know good shooting mechanics it's not a problem with the ki- it's not you it's me no. destiny. Well, <laughs> well a lot of times like I think you should be on our fire squad. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Our fire team. Uh, our fire, yeah, because I think, because we started playing Destiny practically by the time it had first launched, because we had both gotten it for free from a, a mutual friend, and so initially the first playthrough with Destiny, of course, everybody was kind of having that same resolve feeling that it just did not live up to the hype it should have, mm-hmm. yeah. but it has gradually evolved with the... Um, the patches and releases so now it's a stronger game now leading into destiny 2 yeah. um but definitely the i will have to say for destiny 2 what i'm looking forward to most is that oh my gosh humor there's humor in this game <laughs> that wasn't well, that's in the what happens yeah. when you when you when you have nathan fillion as not a minor side yes. character that's, that's shuffled off right. Right. Yeah. it's like it's like put that dude in front like him yes. him and troy baker if you've got them in and the game no one put north them in the yes no one north too because i'm like I, you, I didn't know no one else was in it. He was the ghost. He was the ghost. He, he um he was the one oh, who replaced. Oh, he took over after Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so like you immediately hear the difference because the yeah. the delivery of the humor was kind of lost when Peter did it, unfortunately. And so now that Nolan is doing it, and of course you've seen you know Nolan in action just talking to him. He is his <laughs> I own like that stand up yeah. comedian. Yeah. He's hysterical from start yeah. to finish, and so he has a little bit more. Gravitas when he's delivering his lines to where it's more funny than it was before. So I think I think there's also there's also an element of of just knowing how to do video games. Oh yeah, Peter, Peter Dinklage. The only thing that he had done he he was on uh, on the Telltale Game of Thrones. Yes, which he was playing, playing his own his, his, own, his yeah. own character, and that's that's a very different 
type telltale games are kind of their own little niche exactly. within right. within video games that is okay this is how we do it yeah. and right. it's 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 more of the cinematic where with destiny it needed to be something else and i don't oh, i don't think i i and part of this is just because i love the hell out of peter dinklage oh yes but He's a i don't i don't actor. think yes. i don't think that he got the direction he needed oh, in order to to shift to, to right. you're a robot floating in the sky above this about right. the player character, right? So, so the the actual news. Now that we've finished talking about Destiny One, <laughs> the, the, the actual the foundation. The <laughs> actual news is is that uh, is that they've officially announced that the Destiny One is is now finished. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're probably going to be some patches or whatever, but there's there's going to be no more expansions. They're moving on mass, right. uh, the entire team over to Destiny Two, right? And and that's that's happy for me. Patrick right. Patrick gets all pissy about. Um, about the fact that they said, oh, it's going to be a 10-year plan. And it's like, okay, yeah, but their engine was broken. And, mm-hmm. like, if you if you go back, uh, there was a Kotaku piece about about how it was broken, why it was broken, and how it, it, it really didn't work. Right. And a lot of it was also hamstrung by having to, to stay on the previous platforms. Right. Right. Now they're able to move forward, take advantage of the power of the Xbox One and Scorpio and Pro and PlayStation and all that. Right. And, and just move forward, look forward. Right. And so... This for me is good news because um, your original plan it was really cool. It didn't actually work. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so being able being able to move forward on that, I'm I'm happy about that. And it's good because it it closes Sorry. a chapter. You that's, know. That's really <laughs> <my bad. laughs> Bad, but I mean it's our show, so you can do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. Yeah, sure. Sort of. Twitch won't let me. You know. <laughs> but, uh, do the whole show nude. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe yeah, next. Not the, yeah, next time. Yeah. It's always next time. We'll, we'll find a new platform. <laughs> but, um, I think it's kind of nice, though, because it, it closes a chapter. Like, it's... it's Definitely. You know, yeah. it gives some... Um, a little bit of resolution, especially now that Destiny has gotten way better than what it was when it originally started. Oh, yeah. Because um, just even going back and playing a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. it's just like this is so much fun and yes. You know, um, and they 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 learned a lot. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. because this is uh, Halo was. You know, they they had the the multiplayer aspect, but that's separate from the from the campaign and everything. Oh, and so, being able to to take their their mechanics and turn it into an MMO right. that is that is a huge thing. And they were learning as they did it. Yeah. And so until it came out, they weren't really. I, I I don't think they were able to to fully appreciate how how big of a scope that was. They right. learned a lot, and they're able to take those and start with that knowledge on Destiny 2. Exactly. Right. And so so I think I think that Destiny 2 could have that 10-year plan they were originally talking about right. because now they know what they're They've doing. They've learned from yes. those yeah. mistakes. Yeah, and, very and much so. I think it, it helps a lot that they were receptive to making changes and Definitely listening makes because all the difference. they could have been like, Ubisoft, um, <laughs> just like, well, screw it, we got your money. Uh, we're going to go on. Here's some DLC. Uh, yeah. Bye. Oh, those didn't work either? Okay, never mind. Next, next game. Next game. <laughs> Pre-order this. And, yeah, and, yeah. They, and, they, and like you said, they worked on Destiny 1 until it was fun. Exactly. And then they're taking that and they're doing a fresh start. Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate that. And I especially love that they are they are going out on a level better than they started off on. Exactly. So yeah. I think that, that makes for a better finish. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we already kind of talked about the the FIFA Switch deals. It's on on Switch. It's going to be running on a different engine. It's not going to have yeah. the the single player campaign yeah. mode. Uh, that which apparently okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump a little bit into e- EA's uh, conference. Apparently, like they really liked that, and they have they have the metrics to say that oh people people want to play a single player game inside of our multiplayer game and so like 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 Madden and and FIFA and the the basketball one um, <laughs> the basketball. like they they well there's there's two of them cuz oh, there's yeah. there's the live and the 2K and I don't know which there one There will always be NBA jams for me. NBA jams is my Have you have you played one. Playgrounds? I have not. Oh dude, Playgrounds is the best. Oh, really? I need to need Play, to find that one then. Playgrounds Playgrounds is is the NBA jam of now. <sighs> okay. And it's only like 20 bucks. Finding it. <laughs> Finding it. It's gonna be great. Thanks, That's Kev. Right. I'm selling games on my show. <laughs> That's all you do. Sell games. I love this. That's oh. not all I do. It's <laughs> one of my things I do. They need to pay you what money, is, like ad money. They, okay, yes. we we are, we are open to. Actually, we're not. Um, okay, because okay, where where I am right now, 
I want to I want to eventually build this to be a thing where we can like do t-shirts and whatever but like yes. but like I don't I'm, I'm down for getting free games I don't want I don't want to get paid by anybody right no. because because what what I do right now uh, and this is something that that all kinds of developers deal with is like once you start getting paid by somebody or supported by somebody then it's like yeah. is this really your opinion exactly. and like right now I can talk whatever kind of crap I want I and not freedom. and not have to worry about right. it. And so so this is what 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 you have now is what you're going to get five years from now. Yeah. Right, right. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. uh, I mean, if, I don't know. I might move somewhere. <laughs> Patrick might move somewhere. You don't know. You really don't know. Yeah, but but, but yeah. So uh, so the the FIFA on Switch is going to be kind of a different game, um, but from what we've seen and and. Like from what they showed yesterday at the conference, I think it's going to be really good, um, and it's, it's going to be the best possible handheld. But it is going to be a a version of the game that's held back. Yeah, yeah. And so, so we'll we'll see how that turns out. But uh, <laughs> I got I got FIFA on the Vita, and it's it's, it's not good. Oh, all. is it? So so I'm I'm uh. hoping, but but they they seem to be scaling back the modes and not the mechanics mm. mm-hmm. so i i'm hoping that it'll it'll still be a lot of fun on there but we'll see it's, yeah matter of um, just seeing what what they will do yeah but with things that are that are fun and i can definitively say they're fun uh rocket league is two years old Aww. this upcoming week happy birthday rocket league and they're, old. <laughs> they're doing they're doing they're doing like two years new old. modes and new <laughs> new cars and stuff like that so if you if you've uh, jumped out of Rocket League. There's probably going to be a big push for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I I went ahead. Like I don't. I think that's the only like online game that I've ever gotten the platinum in. Oh, like I just really? I just yeah I just played it long enough, and eventually I got everything. And it, it would be like, oh, I guess I got a hat trick this game. <laughs> okay, cool. That was nice. Uh, Didn't even realize I was trying yeah, for right. that. Well, <laughs> well, to be fair, I <laughs> okay. So I, I convinced my co-driver to buy it. Uh huh. Oh. And and so he bought it, and I played him, and I beat him seven to one. Dang. Ouch! Hurt much. Ouch. And I got the trophy, <laughs> but it was okay because we were we were uh, we were connected. Well, well, we were connected on the on the headset. Oh, cool. So I was able to tell him how bad he sucked while playing him. <laughs> And that was important for me. <laughs> Seeing it on on the screen is not enough. You have to vocally tell yeah. the man he yeah. sucks. This is how yeah. you can improve. And, and also, but but the whole time I could also like hear him laughing because it's because Rocket League is a game that's fun even before you're good. That's true. Like there's there's a lot of games that are not fun until you're good. Yeah, it's exactly. Like Call of Duty, I don't want to play because I'm not good and I hate getting hit by 12-year-olds who are talking crap about my mom. <laughs> oh my god. And my uh, and, and getting nope. teabagged and nope. all that stuff. Oh, yes, yes the teabagging. So So yeah, yes, so, so so that's that's a thing. Uh but yeah, so the the second second birthday of Rocket League and I we both really enjoyed Rocket League awesome. because that that game is that game is stupid fun. <laughs> we we did give it an attempt um, yeah. at Alcon. Yeah, um, it was fun. It was fun. It was, a lot of fun. it was fun the second time when we started to get in the mechanics of the game. Still lost, but it yeah. was still enjoyable we, we to try to get the. Like, yeah, we well, well, it's it's, good. it's, it's yeah. like when uh, like when I first started, I didn't get into actual soccer until I was like seventeen, eighteen years old. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and I I tried other sports, and I was just convinced I sucked at sports. And then I found soccer, and I was like, oh, this, "This one, this is the thing. This is my, <laughs> this is my one." But like at that point, I'm like, I was better at it, but I still sucked. Mm. Uh-huh. And so I was like, "Yeah, I got to kick it. I got to touch the ball." <laughs> and like when you start Rocket League, that's that's how it's like. It's like, "Yes, I got to touch it. I, I bumped it." Okay, I bumped it toward my own goal, but it was but, I but still got it. it. it counts. I, I contributed. Yeah, yes. I stole it away from the from the um, CPU or the other team yeah, just for yeah, a minute. Yeah. I sent it into their goal, but that's okay. <laughs> I made it. I, I made, made it a little bit more complicated for them. Complicated. Heck yeah! I scored just the wrong <laughs> yeah. kind of score. <laughs> so it's the effort that counts. Yes, yes. it is. So yeah. so happy birthday, Rocket League! Yay. And uh, if you haven't played it, we still recommend it. Mm-hmm. Um, next bit is Bethesda is is. They're doing a freemium game, mm. and they're telling us it's AAA. And like, okay, if you if your game is good, let me give you money, and then I'll play it. Mm-hmm. The I, I don't know how y'all feel, but it, it judging by the size, <laughs> yeah. and, mm, mm. coming from both sides, of me, I think I think we've got kind of a consensus it's here just, that like yeah. the the idea of freemium is is just something that 
I've seen it done better. I've never seen it done well. Yeah. And I just, 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 I'm, I'm willing to give you money. Just let me play your game. Yeah, I agree. And mm-hmm. so, um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like it's sort of a bait and switch sort of deal in a way. Usually, <laughs> and I mean, it's 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 kind of okay. So like for me, and this this is very much a, a said from a position of privilege. Mm-hmm. My time is more important to me than my money. I agree. Like, let me, let me, let me, let me give you some money and, and then I will play your game, figure out if it's fun. And if it's, if it's not, I can drop it because, because unlike when I was a kid and I got like one, two games every year, I'm getting games hand over fist right now. Right. Like, like I have, I have plenty of options to play. You know, I'm going through two or three games on the PlayStation, going through two or three games on the Vita. Yeah. And, and then my phone is for texting. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to play games on that. Um, but but yeah. So so like if if you have a game, just, just make it. Let me give you money and then I'll play it. I'm comfortable with this system. I don't need you to mess with it. Right. So right. whatever this is, I I I wish them luck. But this is not for me. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that we probably might get some drops of knowledge maybe at QuakeCon regarding an announcement. They That's might. True. They That's might true. drop. A little trickle. Well, I mean, they've this. they've got a, a conference tonight. Oh, they. Uh, if if you're watching this live, uh, Sunday night is Bethesda's conference, so we'll talk about that on the on the catch up show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like that's they they've got a conference. They've got QuakeCon. They've got all these different things to to work with. They can give us more information, but just the idea of freemium and for turns a triple A game, especially like it's the other companies like capitalizing on that trend oh, and definitely. just ugh, running it into the ground. I know exactly who would do it, and I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. They're selling. <laughs> um, so, and then the in in a similar vein, uh, Battleborn, which they've said on multiple occasions, Gearbox has said, and Randy Pitchford in particular has been like, "No, it's it's never going free to play. It's not going free to play. Mm-hmm. It's going free to play." <laughs> yes, um, about that. <laughs> but they're they're gonna call it something else. They're saying that it's a free trial mode, but mm-hmm. basically what it is is it's the online version, and you can right. buy other stuff, and you you would have to pay if you want to do the single player. Yeah, it's free to play. I don't care what they're calling it. This to me should have been done like six months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, it, it it came out, and it was it was unfortunate enough to be completely overshadowed. Overshadowed yeah. by Overwatch. Yes, and it was is like yes. they were, they they are different games, but they came out at the same time, and everybody went, ooh, Blizzard polish because they, the characters that they come up mm-hmm. with, and like the the game just snaps. Yes, yeah. and it's it's just it's it's beautiful. We love Overwatch. Um, <laughs> um off, off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of tribute, but. Definitely gave me the Overwatch vibes, but I can see where the potential was lying in this game. Mm-hmm. And maybe with this, you think it might be like a good incentive if they care to release like a second go of this, that maybe them releasing it for free play will give people maybe like the want to. Or there, think there, there are people, there are people who already enjoy playing it, mm-hmm. but um, I just, I just don't feel like the audience is there for this particular mm-hmm. title. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's, it's kind of the the whole. It's it's a reflection of like you know when when Armageddon and Deep Impact came out at the same yes. time yeah. and it was like okay nobody's copying anybody but the way the way that society works mm-hmm. certain trends will happen and then it takes them three years to make a game and then this comes out that's mm-hmm. why there was a uh, uh, battle what was what was Battlefield one came oh, out yes. last year yes. and then this year Call of Duty is going to World War one and it's or. World War Two, rather, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's it's going back to old school, and that that is a societal trend, which is sometimes I'm gonna have like an entire half hour section where I just talk <laughs> about this because Please, I've, I've I've learned about it and and the psychology of it and the way the way that society's trends work combined with the length of time it takes mm-hmm. to actually get those ideas out into the open. Right. It's really weird how that works, and and it's. I do get really annoyed with people on Twitter who are like, "Oh yeah, well, Sledgehammer is just is just copying Battlefield One. It's like, okay, no, they that's mm. not. they've been working on they worked on this game for a year and a half before this got released, mm-hmm. right. and then they finished it up. You, that's not how game development no. works. Yeah, you you can't you can't make a Call of Duty game in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Like, and now they're up to to a three year cycle. 
Exactly. They've been working on this game since they did their last one. That's, that's <laughs> not how it works, people. Yeah, and that's always going to be a problem when it's an idea, you know? Yes. Like, you can't predict, you yeah. know, certain ideas. They just happen, and it's like, oh, well, you know, this is, thing has been going on. Um, let's go back, old school stuff. Because I yeah. remember World War II games were like, a mainstay for years, and then yeah. finally yeah, that, people that was, got tired that was of that. What they what they did, yeah. and then they were like, okay, well, well what if what if we modern. brought up some more? And you know, with modern warfare, and particularly with the success yes, of modern warfare, definitely. because it was it was something fresh, it was something new, it was something that was objectively terrifying. Because like you you, I, I don't know if y'all played the campaign, but like the 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 situation where you're going through and. I just shot into the air above everybody because I know how video games work. But, <laughs> but like, like I couldn't, I couldn't deal with the idea of shooting civilians even for, mm-hmm. yeah, even for a pretend rogue mission. Right. I yeah. was like, I'm not shooting civilians. Way too real. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like that's that's a possibility that that I'm I'm not in war. I'm not a soldier because I I cannot do that mm. i can't mm. i can't put myself that far out of uh of what what i believe you know ends justifying the means yes. that kind of stuff like that's that's, yes. that's a whole nother level but you know they they and so they they very quickly dropped away from that aspect and just went to well yeah but what if you had rocket feet that'd be cool mm. right yeah <laughs> and yeah. so they so they explored that and you know that that kind of wore out and they and they were like okay well Let's go back to this, yeah. yeah, because it's it's been long enough, and you know on PS4 we haven't we and Xbox One we hadn't had a World War Two. Let's see what that looks like now exactly. with the technology yes. we have now, and exploring you know different themes that can relate to what's going on in our current pol- political climate. I think it, yeah, you know, I, I feel like it was a good time at first. I was like, well, World War Two, well, you know, it's kind of been done, but I well, think. You know, a fresh take. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the things that, that Patrick and I were really excited about is like there's going to be because uh, World War World War One there weren't really any black squads. Right. But yeah. in World War Two there were they they did have them segregated for the most part. Exactly. But like there's there's a there's apparently characters in this one that has like uh, white people and black people and uh, and Jews working together and and like they actually explore the dynamics mm-hmm. and on on the previous generation. I don't know that they would have been able to do that right. Exactly. And like, and y'all have talked about on your podcast about how they can't, how they can't can get the hair right. right. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> like, okay, like, let's, two hair so okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, come on. Like black people hair. This is a different <laughs> thing. You need to commit to that yes. right, and get it right. And so, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like how they do that. And I just still wish that they'd let me pay twenty bucks and just play the single player mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I can't justify. Okay, I, I said earlier that my, I have more money than time, but I still can't throw sixty dollars <laughs> at something that's going to take me six hours to beat. Right? Yeah, there has to be a and, real and investment there. Yeah, I agree. and so so I I tend to buy them like a year after they come out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah then we play, and then play too. them through that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. It justifies the means. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm willing to like we're willing to put down money for um for a game that's worth it it's and quality. Yeah, some, um, something we the believe quality. In. Yes. Yeah. like Overwatch I was willing to pay that $60 for it even though it was still a few months after its initial release but other games I'm willing to gauge <laughs> I the had traffic. my brother buy it for me for my birthday see stop <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> he, was, he was like hey, he was like man you gotta play this game with me and I was like it's free this weekend I'll play it with you this weekend and I was like you know I think I might play this game but I'm not gonna pay. I'm not gonna spend money on it. And he's like, <laughs> "You need to play this game. I'll spend the money." And I was like, "Master yeah, manipulator. You ain't, got, know, you ain't right? got a wife. You ain't got kids. You'll so be you, fine. You don't, you don't have that struggle, right? Oh, you're willing to pay for? Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Now, and I no. did, and and I had I had a lot of fun with it. So, yeah. Um, next bit of news: we got uh, the Capcom Legacy Collection two, and mm-hmm. I'm not getting the second one. I want I want Capcom Legacy Collection three. And give me Mega Man X 1, 2, and 3. That's what I want. That's what I want to pay for. That's what I want my girls to play. Because, um, like, uh, the the first collection was 1 through 6. Oh. Mm-hmm. And they're so good. And it's like 20 bucks for 6 that's games. That's amazing. Especially and they're, and they're, they're really good. Yeah. They're, they're good quality games. This is going to be uh, 7 through 10. Um, and it's it's not coming to Switch, which is kind of weird. 
And it seems like it would be a perfect platform for yeah, them. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it'll get there, but this is, uh, again, Nintendo. this is... They, yeah. Well, they, Capcom, Capcom is every bit as cautious as, as Nintendo, and they're like, well, and see how this turns out. And so I don't, I don't think they had it ready to go. Yeah. I think it'll, I think it'll come eventually, but they're not ready to announce it yet. Um, so, so again, this is seven, eight, nine, and ten, which um, I don't, I don't have the nostalgia for those that I had for one through six because yeah. like Mega Man two and three are just some of the best platforming, the best mm-hmm. shooting, yeah. jumping around back and forth, and and the most the it's it's the bosses that, that I identify with. Right. right. Like Metal Man, Air Man, Snake Man, yeah. Pharaoh Man. Like th- those those are the best. And then seven, eight, nine, and ten, they're cool, but they're they're I I don't have the same nostalgia for, those. Yeah. for it. And plus nine and ten are just I'll be honest. And I, I've I've talked about my love for, for Dark Souls and Super Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac. These are too hard for me. Oh my god! I can't, okay, I I played them. I I played uh, I played nine for like two hours, just jumping around to different bosses. I couldn't find a boss that I could get to the boss. Oh wow! The levels themselves <laughs> are just ridiculous hard. And you love the hard games like that's yeah. your thing. Okay, yeah. I t- tell you what, put it on Vita and I'll play it. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> okay, be the release. Chill. Yeah, but, Do but, it. <laughs> but but if but if I'm at the I'm at the house, and and I hope they fix the music player too, mm. because uh, music player on Legacy Collection One, you could pick a track and you could run it, and then it would play one length of that track, so like a minute and a half, two minute segment, and then it stops. Oh. It doesn't. It doesn't go to the next track. It doesn't loop. It doesn't do anything. It just lets you listen to the music one at a time, and it's like. Okay, I, I don't think you understand how music works. <laughs> no, nope. no. We don't sit there, select a track, and then just no, no. Just... We we turn it on and then we go do dishes or empty exactly. the trash, yes. play with the kid. You know, this this is this is background stuff. Let they it let it play to, in the background. They want so, you to appreciate it. Yeah, and so so and like long silences. <laughs> yeah, long like, silences, and I, and then I'm like, all right, go go hit down X. <laughs> No, I right, go hit down X. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's like skip, skip to the next one. So, so I hope that they do the the music player better. But I really did like the the concept art and mm-hmm. like the extras that they had with it. I might buy it just for that because it's it's twenty bucks. So that's coming that's out mm-hmm. August. I want to say. Mm. I think it's I think it's coming out. It's coming out soon. <laughs> next couple so, months. So yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, we talked a little bit about about mobile gaming, but Monument Valley. Did yeah. you play? The, did y'all play the first one? No, no. But ironically, now that you had um, mentioned that, I was looking or jonesing for a game to play on my phone, and I have a ton of mobile gaming phones because I'm like, if I can't be on be on my console, I want to have something yeah. when I can't get to it. So I generally have seventy five games on my <laughs> on my mobile gaming, and that's not including the ones I. Did not re-download, but... Do you have, do you have uh, Android or iPhone? I have iPhone. Okay. So... I don't know if this is on there, but Sector Strike. Really? Like, what's... Sector Strike. Is that it's, about the it's, same? It's, no, it's, 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 it's the best free game I've ever played on a phone. Hmm. And it's, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's like a Galaga type thing, and like the, the, uh, your ship moves wherever your finger goes, uh-huh. and so you dodge the shots that way, and it's, it's a bullet hell type thing. Oh, sweet. Is, is that, it's, it's pretty good. Oh, I'll have to give that one a try. Okay. Anyway, so money, money moved out. Um, well, ironically that you had said that, I had seen that, I guess it just launched this week, the second one. Yeah. But I saw that that was, um, I guess, premiered on their, on the, in the App Store yeah. website. So I was like, oh, I want to download it. But I'm like, I'll wait. I'll wait. Because if I start downloading it at work, I'm not working for the rest <laughs> of the day. That's pretty much going to be a, a non, a non-disclosure deal. But um, I had looked at it because it, it kind of reminds me of a... Because it's like more labyrinth kind of deal. Yeah, and it's, it's I, I really like the art style. Like it's got the the kind of M C Escher, yes. you know, dimension yes. flipping, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's that's cool. Yeah, that's what it reminds me reminded me of is that and another kind of game. I just love games that have even for mobile gaming have artistic integrity to them, yeah. and this one has it. And it kind of reminds me of Broken Age in a little bit because it's puzzled. It's a puzzle game. I love puzzle games, okay. and like I hate puzzle games. <laughs> you, you, you do, you do, but um, but I generally do because it sometimes just keeps my mind a little bit, a little. It oils my brain a little bit sometimes, so I like that I aspect, that. Of, aspect of it. But you definitely recommend. 
I, I definitely recommend Sector Strike. <laughs> <laughs> Mon- Monument Valley is not for me, but uh, it was it was really funny because uh, I got it. I got it either on on like one of the one of the Google sales or like it was free on the Amazon App Store. Oh. I, I I got it somehow, and mm. I didn't I didn't pay full price for it because I don't do that. Oh yeah. Um, but it was it was funny because uh, I it was it was on one of the tablets that we have because mm-hmm. um, I have those those linked to my own a- accounts and various things, and um, so Aria, uh, my older one, came to me and she was like, um, she was like, how do I do the next level, and and I picked it up and I was like um Uh-oh. about that <laughs> there's no more levels oh wow you beat it oh and she was like okay <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like, so and like, like I, I knew she was playing it <laughs> yeah but I didn't I didn't know like how well wow. she was doing and like wow. there was like two or three times when she needed me to explain the mechanics to it but like um this this was like a year and a half ago she was like four Wow. Like she's she's her 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 puzzle solving skills are really interesting because like she she's not so great at at the mechanics aspect, mm-hmm. but she's good at the the puzzles. So like yeah. um one of the games that we have for free on PlayStation this month is Spy Chameleon. Mm-hmm. And that's I think that's the kind of puzzle game that I like because it's it's uh, you know take take this this room this scenario mm-hmm. and figure out how to do it and then part of the trick is actually doing it right yeah. whereas for me like if if I come up against a puzzle and I'm like I don't know that requires that's it it's, 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 okay. it's, just, it's just kind of a uh, 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 and I'm done because like because like I don't I don't want to sit there and just stare at this thing that that I right. feel like yeah. has beaten me right and but but yeah so so Arya just walks up she's like how do I get to the next level and I'm like there's there's no more levels <laughs> you're, oh, you're done you beat it <laughs> slow clap congrats <laughs> slow clap so so yeah I'll I'll probably pick this up at some point for her uh, once mm-hmm. once it comes to Android because oh, they don't on. like Android nobody likes Android everything clearly. comes to iPhone first <laughs> clearly including Nintendo stuff. But yeah, so so yes. Monument Valley came out with like like no fanfare, which I thought was weird because like uh, the first Monument Valley was on House of Cards. Really? Yeah, like uh, he he plays he plays something hmm. every every season, except this season. Season five, he didn't play anything. Dun, dun, dun. I know you're president, but come on, man, <laughs> He's you got playing play video games. politics. Yeah, like <laughs> like uh, the the first the first season, he plays. Uh, Call of Duty or something on PS4. Mm-hmm. The next year he played uh, like Black Ops Declassified on the Vita, and like uh, no 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 I take it back they 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 talked about uh, uh, PSVR. They had they had uh, oh. a candidate using VR um, to to deal with his own PTSD. That's pretty sweet. Which and and That's and cool. so so Sony has has look to normalize gaming and and show it being used in these different scenarios and uh the i don't know how much y'all have watched of house of cards but like the uh the the yates the journalist guy that shows up um Mm -hmm. he he actually uh met yates because of what he wrote about monument valley wow And so like they had a little bit of monument valley in house of cards and i was like that's kind of cool because Uh because that is it is almost omnipresent, right? Mm. And so, so I thought I thought that was nifty. That's cool. But, I had uh, no idea. I don't. Yeah. I don't watch House of Cards. My sister does, but now I'm like, it's on my check li- it It's on my queue of like all yeah. the other thousand things I still need to watch. But yeah, I mean that goes to show that for a lot of us, gaming is a form of therapy. Mm-hmm. It is my therapist. Absolutely. <laughs> and and it was it was really interesting to see, uh, particularly uh, season five, because it was it was somebody. Um, who who had dealt with a traumatic real life combat situation, mm-hmm. and then he's he's in VR and and trying to to use that to help him through it. And I think that that's something that that could be really useful mm-hmm. um, because you can take the helmet off. Yes. Yeah. And 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 leave it. It's yeah. Away. And and so it's 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 kind of the whole idea of of encountering and being willing to face your fears. Yes. Which is, I applaud anyone who does that because actually facing your fears is really difficult. Yes. yes. I'm learning. So, yeah. Um, next up, we have Vanillaware. I talked. I talked during our predictions episode. I said I wanted new Vanillaware stuff. Um, Thirteen Sentinels by Vanillaware, published by Atlas, is coming west 
and that makes me excited because mm-hmm. uh, have y'all played Dragon's Crown no. or uh, Odin Sphere? My, I know my husband has, and he was pretty okay with Odin Sphere, but um, I, and looking at this particular game that's coming out for Thirteen Sentinels, it looks pretty sweet because it kind of gave me. Is, and it, is it just me, or did it give anybody kind of a? Um, oh crap! What's the what's the movie I'm thinking about? The ones with the robots and they fight. Pacific Rim. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. yeah. There's, there's, there's <laughs> definitely a little bit of that. Yeah, but like uh, my my favorite thing about about Vanillaware is just their art is so beautiful. Yeah, it's so pretty. It felt like it felt like also a comic book. It felt mm-hmm. just like that. Yeah, and they, and they're not they're not afraid to go weird. You know, <laughs> like they go they go so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so uh, we okay. So it 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 came out on Vita in Japan, and I'm really hoping they bring it over here because I. And I'll be honest, I'll buy it either way. <laughs> but, but if it comes if it comes to Vita, I know I will buy it and play it. Right, and right. That's that's important to me. <laughs> but but Van- Vanillaware just has such beautiful games. Yeah, I, I just I just I, I love their art style, and yeah. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that coming this way, mm-hmm. and and I'm I'm glad the Vanillaware stuff is is getting published because because Atlas is my friend and they want to give me the games that Atlas I want to play. Atlas is amazing. Mm-hmm. Atlas is so good. We mm-hmm. love Atlas. Three cheers for Atlas! Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, no. No, <laughs> no, one, two, three. no, two, three. One, two, three. Um, and then uh, Mass Effect, which I think you are. Oh, oh, just a little bit. Okay, just so a bit. so <laughs> apparently there was there was a petition on 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 Twitter in particular to make Jail buy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. because he's in Angara, and so that that makes sense for the they they have a lot more uh, uh, fluid representation in their culture mm-hmm. of of gender and, yeah. and that and so it makes it makes sense for that character. Mm-hmm. And so big petition, and with the last announced patch, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't know if it's gone live yet. But, I think uh, so. They, uh, I think. I, it, I, th- I think. I think it has by now. It hadn't when I when I first found this. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that is his his uh, his uh, orientation is is fluid because it makes sense for that character. Mm-hmm. And and so I was really proud of Bioware because they they have consistently been pushing pushing the limits on that. Like yes. in uh, in what was what's the the Dragon Age Inquisition. They they had a trans character. Yes, mm-hmm. and and they didn't. They could have handled it better, but they're still doing better than everybody else. True, because, that is true. Because because one of the things that they did was they they mentioned uh, the the character mentioned their dead name, which was the the name that they were given at birth. Before, yeah. And and that's that's not really something that you do Mm-mm. as a trans character. And so, but even so, they are trying they're they're working with the community and with with this they 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 reached out to the to the queer community and and we're like okay we want to do this we want we want you to be represented well mm-hmm. right exactly yeah. represented mm-hmm. well and so and so they they reached out and this was this was the character that after people started playing the game mm-hmm. they're like this one this one makes sense mm-hmm. let us have that one mm-hmm. and so uh I'm I'm really happy for Bioware doing that because um, representation is something that is that is absolutely critical for video games because yes. video games can very much be a it, it used to be a, uh, a a collection it was it was a boys club and it's like okay I understand that you had Nintendo in particular kind of had to do that because they had to sell it as a toy. Yeah. So they had to put it in the boys or girls section. Right. And we're 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 merging those two together and it's okay for me to like pink stuff. Yeah. And and this is this is important and we 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 want to have representation and we don't want we want gaming to be for everybody. Right. Because it's it's important. It's it's art. Art yes. is not exactly. art is it not is. gender restricted, and it shouldn't be gender restricted. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and as a business practice, it's a smart move. Like gaming should be inclusive because yeah. then you can reach the widest audience possible. Yeah. yeah, and if you're you're doing that representation right, then you don't have to really try that hard. It's like okay, well, we got more yeah. people. Right, that's more money for us. I mean, it just makes sense that way. Well, and and like the 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 idea the the identity. The idea <laughs> of gender and, and, and race and sexuality, yes. like those 
those lines have have no relation to what you want to do for entertainment. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so, like, video games are not just we. Straight white males are not the only ones who want to push buttons and make something happen on the screen um, and kill things. Like, yeah, and kill things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I volunteer tribute all this time. This is important. <laughs> Time. And, and and it, it also it also allows us to to expand our horizons oh, and to see and to see characters that that we might not meet in our own like environment. Right. Like we we may not have friends that are are in these particular uh, subsects. Yeah. But but being able to see those represented well in mm-hmm. video games is important and allows us to interact with those people when we meet them in the real world. Oh, definitely. Better. Definitely. And so, so I'm I'm really happy that Bioware has has continued to to move the bar and raise the bar and show how these things can be done well. Right. Exactly. And so, so yeah, I'm I'm really happy mm-hmm. with this. And plus, I, I don't know, maybe it's just easier with a with a big monocle. Jala's Bay. Alien guy. <laughs> Jala's Bay. So, okay. um, and I think it makes sense too because um, when we get a new alien species, it seems wrong to just have male and female like it's nice to have um more fluidity in terms of gender and sexual identity it makes sense and it's Um, it's also like uh like in 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 star trek when mm -hmm. when roddenberry released star trek he was able to explore uh societal issues Mm -hmm. in a way that's one degree separated and so he was able to push the boundary further than anybody else could yeah because you know that's that's where you have the the first interracial kiss on television. That's right. where that's, I mean, on the bridge he's he's got a he's got a black lady. He's got an alien. He's got a uh, in the middle of the Cold War. Right. Yeah. He's, got, a he's, got, he's got a Russian <laughs> and, and an Asian on screen, and it's it and they're all just working together because right. why wouldn't they? Right. And it's it's the belief that we will reach a point where that's just life. Right. And that's. Yeah, that's that's what I want, and I want I want to continue pushing things forward on this, and so I'm I'm really happy that EA did this, yes, and yeah. and and to to allow that kind of representation, and to make the effort because right. it is it is frankly easier to avoid controversy to sit back and just do straight white guy angry straight angry white guy <laughs> shooting things <laughs> like that's the easier one, yeah. but. But it's important to be able to move forward and, exactly. and, and, and reach out and, and do more. So, yay, Bioware. Yay, yay. yay Bioware. I, I was exactly. very like rough on Mass Effect when it first came out, like Andromeda. Mm-hmm. But with all the new patches and the updates, like I want to go back and replay and see what's changed since then. And yeah, yeah. get a like, uh, there's, perspective view. There's on. a lot of people who who have who have said, and like we've gotten the chat that uh, the best one was Mass Effect Two. Like there's there's a lot of yes. a lot of people going back and forth on you know Mass Effect one was the best or Mass Effect two was the best, and that's kind of where the discussion ends. But <laughs> <laughs> but like different people like different aspects of those games. Exactly, but yeah. and Andromeda feels like and a lot of this is I feel because of the studio. Mm-hmm. But they yeah EA yeah yeah EA keep keep trying <laughs> keep trying and and so I'm I'm okay I'm okay with them kind of putting the putting the the whole thing on the on the back burner and right. seeing where they right. go from here. Right. right. I think it'll be best just to let the series heal overall and just go from here. Yeah. Especially given um, the news that had gone out about like the backstory of what had happened over the course yeah, of the that, that was um, Yeah. So also I I linked that on our Twitter account, but cool. um, Kotaku did did a really, really interesting deep dive into yeah. what WTF happened with Andromeda? <laughs> yeah, and it yeah. was and it was it was really great because uh, Schreier has the has the contacts to find out mm-hmm. what was going on, what happened, and game development is so much more than a bunch of people getting together making a game and then dispersing. Definitely, like there's 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 politics, there's business interests <sighs> all the time. There's so much more that goes into it, and particularly with with a, you know, you've got. Bioware, which is a massive company, and EA, mm-hmm. which is a massive company, had publicly mm-hmm. traded, which brings like there's there's yeah. so much politics. That's why I love indies. <laughs> um, but there's there's so much politics and, and frankly nonsense that goes oh, that goes that goes into game making, and it's it's interesting to see um, how that affects mm-hmm. game makers, mm-hmm. and unfortunately sometimes it affects them like this yeah. yes. but um their their need to to outsource and and 
the the constantly changing like mm-hmm. as you get you get new people and they they want to put their finger in the pie and or drop a new ingredient in it right. and just make the game devs deal with it like too many cooks just yeah too many cooks <laughs> exactly way too many cooks well but you know I'm, I'm glad that they've addressed those issues and they're working to fix those mistakes because um, when a lot of the creative team left initially I was mm-hmm. like oh that's that's not a good sign right. that good. was a red flag that's already I'm like yeah okay yeah. we'll see what happens and yeah, we got what we got, but they're working on it, so yeah. I, I can't complain anymore. Yeah, yeah, for now, definitely the effort has been put into these last patches. Even though it's almost one of these things where, well, how come this wasn't there when it first launched? I mean, we could have avoided half of the half of the things that have gone on now. But I'm kind of glad that they went ahead and just fixed it within this now three month mm-hmm. yeah. um, um, time allowance. So. And, of course, now that they're stepping back just to see, what did we do wrong? And everyone's like, we kept telling you what you're doing wrong already. But I'm you like, could have just you asked. Could have just right? asked. Yeah. Um, especially what had happened with, you know, Mass Effect 3 and all that stuff. You could have yeah. kind of um, and, learned and, from there. In, in a lot of ways, uh, Mass Effect 1, 2, 3, like, it, it did kind of build. But then they got to the ending and they were like... Oh crap! What do we do now? Yeah, well, because because the like there were there were so many there were so many games that that just kept building, kept expanding. Yeah, and it was like okay, w- your because your decisions made made a difference, made an impact. Yeah, oh yeah, and yes. uh, uh, in the chat he's saying that gaming companies are releasing games too early, and it's like mm-hmm. yes, but the the ability to the ability to test games like once it gets out in the wild. In the first 24, I, I, I think the quote that I read was in in the first 24 hours um, of a game's of a game's release, it has already experienced 10 times the amount of playtime that we're able to devote to testing. Wow, interesting. So so like players are going to find the bugs that the testing team couldn't. Oh, definitely. And so and so um, there's also. I'll, I'll hit this up on our on our Twitter account at Twiach if you want to follow us there. Um, I'll put this out this afternoon. Um, but extra credits did did a, a a special on on why games get released buggy and and how these things come about. And it's it's really fascinating because I just play them and I, I sit here and, and complain about them. Yeah. <laughs> but but like it, it is it is a really complicated process and mm-hmm. and when the when the business side comes into it. And that's that's why I love companies like like CD Project Red right. who are truly independent. Yeah. They're not answering to stockholders. Um, and yeah. so so like EA EA is the biggest company that answers I feel the most to them. And yeah. so yes. so even if they know it's going to be buggy they the the people who are actually in charge be like you got to release it and i, I don't right. think i don't think they appreciate how much financial benefit there is to goodwill yes right like right. because because if if i believe in a company i'll buy that game like oh, first definitely. of all <laughs> rock rockstar yeah. and and for me from software from software oh, is yeah. the is the only people that i will pre-order from because i know that when it comes out it's done. Yes, exactly. And like, and like, when, when, when Bloodborne came out, like the the load times were too long. Mm. Okay, I will I will sit here and I will I will wait and I'll think about how I did wrong. Maybe take another drink. <laughs> and like, like that's y- your y- resting y- moment. <laughs> no, but y- okay. So uh, I was I was explaining this to somebody else somebody the other day. I don't know how much I'll drink, but you ever you ever hit perfect drunk, where like you can you can just play and. Like your 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 subconscious takes yes. over. Yes. Like that is yes. such a weird thing. It is so much fun. Yes. Just autopilot. Yeah. But you're still, well, still fully good. aware. You're still fully aware. Yeah, it's, but autopilot. But, yeah. But, but like like you're not second guessing yourself. Yes. Is, is is weird. So like, <laughs> but like then then you take one more sip, and you just, <laughs> just go down and it just flows. This was a mistake. It's, it's bad, folks. Not not recommend. Twitch is not recommending that, but, but yeah, my choices, right? Yeah, drink responsibly. I, drink responsibly. <laughs> hey, drink and game responsibly. Yeah, I'm sitting at home. That's that's as responsible as it gets. I'm only killing pretend people. See, I thought it was a bad when I just get this the when you're sleepy and you're gaming at the same time. Oh. That's also oh, really bad yeah. too. That's I, I I can't I can't do that. Like I have I have a separate category of games that I because like most most of the games that I play are like the stupid hard ones. Yeah. Yes. And like, I, if I'm too tired, I just can't play those. Yes. So I, I gotta have like a visual novel or something. And uh, 
Actually, I've been going back to the PS3. I'm playing Catherine now. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I play that. Yeah, that's... Atlas. <sighs> Atlas. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, that... Atlas. And, and, like, most of that game is just watching a story and, like, making texting decisions. Mm. I can do that when I'm tired. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's fine. That's pretty easy. So, yeah. Uh, we have... Two more news things. So we have uh, Everywhere, which was a game that was part of the, the PlayStation Indie Play thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the trailer has been qualified as a short film and nominated for an Oscar. I saw that. Yes. I was like, yeah. Video yes. games are an art. Yes, right. they because, are. Okay, so, so we, had, we had Journey nominated for a Grammy. Right. Yeah, first original soundtrack. Right. And this is the first gaming-related thing to be nominated for an Oscar. Yes. And so, like, so like eventually they'll EGOT. And I, I don't know how they're going to get that Tony, but we'll figure it out. It's going to be a musical. You <laughs> as, know it. As, as, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. The, the Telltale musical? The, hey, is, it, is that where that's going to be? I think it should. I think it should. All right, do that, Telltale, and then we'll, we'll tell you how it goes. I was just watching him like, man, this is like the best biology lesson I've ever seen. I'm like, I wish I had this in high school. <laughs> like, this is <laughs> crazy. It is, it is absolutely like like educational and, and beautiful. mentally stimulating. Yes. It's, it's, it's the best. We like I, it. I was getting some um, Katamari Damacy with the rolling bears at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I kind of got yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah, definitely. <gasps> um, it also it also kind of reminded me of uh, of that game company's first game, Flow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it was it was it was like the and then you know you you've got that and then you've got Katamari Damacy and there's there's one more that that's like you have to you have to be big enough to eat them. I don't know. I don't know. You have to be big enough to eat things. <laughs> I but, keep thinking spore, but... And I'll keep thinking spore a little bit, too. Yeah, especially when we got into the, the mi- um, microorganisms and stuff and just yeah. the infinite of space. And, of course, it gave you a little bit of, like, space travel or Mass Effect feels with the universes. Mm-hmm. And, like, it seems so much infinite. It, uh, it, yeah. That was just mind-blowing. And it's so pretty. Very it's pretty. so pretty. Very pretty. It, it gave me that journey, that journey beautiful feels when everything was expanded and like oh, oh i can't i can't handle yeah. it <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a really fantastic thing so. yes um then the last thing we have is uh fable fortune which is the collectible card game uh mm-hmm. is is coming to early access in july and again this is another thing that i'm going to announce it's not for me mm-hmm. i want to i want to play fable i want to fight chickens i want to grow demon <laughs> horns <laughs> Like that's that's fable to me. That's like on the, my list too. Like I have it and I haven't yeah, had a chance to play it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fa- fable too. Fable is a lot of fun and it it also okay. So from Fable comes Infamous, mm. which which I got I got way more into Infamous. But like the the idea of decision making. Yeah. Fable Fable was the first one to really bring ethics into what you did as what you as did as your character. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so so I feel that it was a really important series and I. Uh, apparently it wasn't financially viable, mm. but I, I really appreciated that they were willing to go places nobody else had gone before. Yeah, yeah. And I, I I really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, they uh, Lionhead is still doing things, and so they they have a card game that's coming out. Um, hmm. So I wish them well. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. But this yeah. is yeah this is this is just a thing that's it's. It's, it's not for me, but I, I hope that, that people who enjoy card games can, you know, support Lionhead yeah, and definitely. let that come out. Definitely. Yay. So, yeah. So, that's that's the gaming news for last week. <laughs> um, we, we are going to go ahead and, and, and keep working toward uh, toward covering all the E3, all the E3 stuff yes. like that. Yes. It's so much information. Oh, I think, yes. I think uh, yeah, we got a couple minutes until... Microsoft kicks off their thing. Oh, oh then, really? Yeah, because Microsoft is doing uh, today Sunday. Oh wow! And oh, the whole spiel and begins. And there's, there's gonna be there's gonna be so much news. We're gonna absorb it and and give you the information that's actually relevant. Mm-hmm. Except for the sports stuff, you can go find that on your own. <laughs> Sorry about that. So that's what we got. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. I'm I'm this week. I am half of this week in our collective heads. <laughs> and this is Tandem Cannon, and, and we 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 thank them very much. Well, thank for you coming. for having us. Yeah, this has been a long time coming. And we're just like, oh, we have a thing. And, and, and um, the other thing. Yeah, schedule, and another schedules, thing. schedules, schedules are hard. And I get that. But I was, <laughs> I was really glad to be able to get you guys on camera. And, oh. Well, thank you for inviting. So we have to have you on our, our spiel. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. So, thank you very much. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.